Hello and welcome back. Let's continue our troubleshooting section by taking a look at some VPC troubleshooting scenarios. I'll also open up VPC over here. So the first one we want to take a look at is if new EC2 instances are not automatically being assigned a public IP address. Now this can be a common issue and we always want to make sure to modify the auto assign public IP settings on the subnet. So we can come over here, take a look at subnets. Click on any one of our subnets here, probably one that is going to be public. And then under subnet actions, we can go to modify auto assign public IP. And if this is unchecked, then new instances launched into this subnet by default will not have a public IP address. So I can check this here and click save. And then by default, any new instances I provision into this subnet will have a public IP address. Next, a NAT gateway is configured, but instances inside a private subnet still cannot download packages. Well, what do you need to do here? Just creating a NAT gateway is not enough. The route table associated with the private subnets has to have a route built into it to the NAT gateway. So you have to make sure that any NAT gateway that you have is pointed to in the route tables. So if I look here under my private route table under routes, I do have a route here to the NAT gateway. So make sure that when you create a NAT gateway that you remember to create the route to that route gateway from the private route table. Next, traffic is not making it to the instances even though security group rules are correct. Well, just like when we talked about EC2 instances and making sure that the rules are correct for security groups, we also want to make sure that our network access control lists have proper allow rules as well for the type of traffic that we want to allow in. So you can always come down here, click on network access control list, view your network access control list, and make sure that inbound and outbound rules are what you want them to be. Very important because a lot of times this can be something that will trip you up. Next, how about when you get an error when attempting to attach multiple internet gateways to a VPC or also attempting to attach multiple virtual private gateways to a VPC? Well, the answer to that is simple in that you can only have one internet gateway attached to a VPC at any given time. Next, let's talk about that if a VPC security group for EC2 instances does not have enough rules for the required application, what should you do? Well, one thing to know is that an EC2 instance can have multiple security groups associated with it. So if you need more rules than what one particular security group will allow, you can apply multiple security groups to one particular EC2 instance. Next, how about if you cannot SSH or communicate with resources inside of a private subnet? Well, two things can happen here. Either you have not set up a proper VPN, and we're gonna to get to VPNs later on in this course, or you have not connected to an EC2 instance, meaning a bastion host within the VPC to launch a connection from. So remember that EC2 instances that are in a private subnet cannot be accessed from an outside resource. You first have to have a resource inside the VPC that is public that you can SSH into, and then from there launch a connection to an internal instance placed inside of a private subnet. Now, as an alternative to that, you can use a VPN, and we will get to that later on in this course. Also, if you have a successful site-to-site -site VPN connection, but unable to access extended resources, what you need to do here is you need to add on-premise routes to the virtual private gateway route table. And again, we'll go into that in more detail during the hybrid section of this course, but I do mention it here under the troubleshooting for VPCs. Also, you can have a failure to create a VPC peering connection between two VPCs in different regions. Well, it is important to know that peering connections can only be created between two VPCs in the same region. So we will talk about this in more detail when we go into our VPC peering lesson later on in this course. But again, I do put it here because it does fall under VPC troubleshooting and it is important to know that you cannot peer two VPCs that are not in the same region. So again, that is just a quick summary of some common issues you may find when working with VPCs. And with that, we'll conclude this lesson. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.